Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for being here today. We've got four awesome speakers coming to talk to you today. Just a quick hello. Hello, everybody. Are you awake? Are you ready for these people? Three of them, I must warn you, speak a little funny like me. They're from the UK, okay? So if you can cope with me, you can cope with them. And the first one is Darren. So can you give him a warm round of applause, please? Come on, Darren from Zero Light. You can do better than that. Come on, he's not coming. Come on. Thank you very much. So, cheers. So an incredible 99% of consumers are unhappy with the new car buying experience. And this is something that we're addressing at Zero Light. And the problems really come down to three key areas. The first one is you can never see the car that you're going to buy. So that's a problem that you can solve digitally in real time. The other problem is the battleground is now the internet for new car sales. Google thinks the average person has 900 digital touch points before they buy a car. As a consequence to that, nobody's visiting the dealers anymore. The average person only goes once to visit a new car dealer before they buy a car. So we're working with these car manufacturers and others on reimagining that whole consumer journey. So if we look at the average car buying journey, you've got awareness, consideration, and conversion. Here's all your consumers that are running in. And if you're lucky, at the end, they'll actually monetize and buy a car. What we've done is create a digital twin of that car that follows the consumer all the way through the process and actually tracks the data of what they're doing. So the next time you see something like a a video advert for a car, which is what's coming up now, that car that's generated will be the generated in real time by zero light. Similarly, on websites, if you go to Audi DE, this is the new Audi DE website. It's web streamed from the cloud and totally interactive 3D car. So you can have a better experience online. And similarly, we're using the latest technologies like virtual and augmented reality for the dealership. So you actually go in there right at the very end and actually validate your purchase. So if you put all this together, what's actually happening is you're actually selling more cars at higher value and tracking them through the whole process. And what we're doing is we're really heading towards the holy grail of digital marketing, which McKinsey says, which is basically digital personalization at scale. Many thanks. Thank you very much. Round of applause, please. Round of applause. Take a seat, Darren. Darren, take a seat. Thank you very much. And please, round of applause for Iggy, please. Come on over. Please, take the stage. Bon dia. Bon dia. Welcome. Bon dia. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Inigo. I'm the founder of uh, The Motion. Very happy to be here today. So um, we are a Facebook marketing partner in the creative platform side, and we automate video ad creation for any uh, marketer in Facebook. So what is the problem? 72% of today's internet traffic is video, but only 19% of the marketing dollars are dedicated to video advertising. Why? Why is this happening? You have all gone through the process of creating a video ad. It's expensive, very time consuming, and when you need to update the content, it's a nightmare. Well, I have good news today, not anymore. We have created a solution that enables any marketer with a digital catalog, create a video ad of each and every product of that catalog automatically, deliver it through Facebook and Instagram, and run dynamic updates in a daily basis. You'll see a demo here like in three steps. You can create a video catalog of your product by delivering us, number one, the data, number two, selecting the creative, number three, selecting the soundtrack, and that's it. The video catalog has been created at scale. You will see all the videos that have been created from the catalog, and you will see how this content is shown through a mobile. It is pretty impressive. We've been running the business for two years and a half, we are lucky to be delivering service to more than 100 global brands today, and we are accelerating fast. Now, the thing is, is everybody ready for the video revolution? We are here to make it happen. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Iggy. Dominic, please come to the stage. Warm round of applause for Dominic, please. Hi, everyone. Hey, how's it going? We do. Okay. Hi, my name is Dominic Pantelidis. I'm the co-founder and CEO of BringHub. BringHub is one of the leading contextual commerce platforms in the industry. We bridge the gap between media and retail. What we do there is our technology enables you as users, as consumers, to seamlessly discover and purchase across content. We have built and developed one of the most powerful contextual analysis engines in the market. What does this mean? Our proprietary technology enables through intelligent analysis that we can detect any kind of commerce opportunity within content and seamlessly push contextually relevant products directly within the editorial content. One of our core products is the native commerce unit. The native commerce unit is our core product for publishers. What that means, we al allow publishers and digital innovators to generate commerce uh, uh, generated revenues directly um, through our solutions without having to change their infrastructures at all. The second core product is our distributed commerce solution. The distributed commerce solution helps major marketplaces and retailers sell their offerings outside of their own ecosystems and therefore uh, generate traffic and sales. We've been in the market for two and a half years now and we've achieved substantial amount of traction. We work with some of the major premium publishers and digital innovators like BuzzFeed, Time Inc, Oath. We have a major distributed commerce partnership with eBay that's rolling out. And last but not least, we received a investment, a, a strategic investment from Forbes Media earlier this year, and it will be a significant driver of success for the media industry. BringUp is revolutionizing commerce through our contextual targeting engine, engine that is industry leading. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Juan, please join us on the stage. Warm round of applause for Juan, please. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Juan Marzenat, uh, the co-founder at Marfil. Um, for those of you who don't know us, basically we're a mobile platform that helps publishers create, optimize, and monetize mobile pages. So we came up with this idea a long time ago, back in 2010. We established the company kind of the next year, 2011, and since then we've grown dramatically, right? So we now serve over 6 billion readers a year, which basically means everyone on earth has been on our platform, kind of. Um, we call these readers um, what Google Analytics is um, calls a visit or a session, right? So of course that those are not uniques, but uh, visit that we have on our platform. So one person might be there one, two, three, many times, right? But still a lot of people. Okay. Where's the? Okay. So we are um, today's fastest growing ad tech platform. Over the past five years, we've grown 7x every year on average. We are a team of 90 members, uh, both in our headquarters in Barcelona and in our office, subsidiary office we have in New York. We have customers in 45 countries, including places as, as, such as Nigeria or Afghanistan, for instance. And by the way, you can't imagine how difficult it is to send a transfer wire to Afghanistan. You need to go through a terrible process with the banks and everything. And this, this is something we feel very proud about. We've been endorsed by major tech companies such as Google, Facebook, or Gardner and Forrester at the same time. This is how our platform looks like. This is an existing customer of ours, the Washington Times. You can take your device and go to it right now, and you will see that it loads super fast. Our average loading time is 0.6 seconds, which is faster than Google AMP or Facebook Instant Articles. 
um, the engagement you get, the number of page views, the time on site, all those metrics are go through the roof with our map platform and the bounce rate drops dramatically, normally around 50%. So what now? What can we expect over the next years, right? So we plan to be the standard platform for publishers all over, right? We want all major publishers to use our platform. And we, our goal is to reach 50 billion users in two years. And for doing that, we need to double our team, operations, and capacity. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please. So guys, you're all very successful. You've found, you founded very successful companies that have been growing very quickly. Can I ask you, starting with Darren first, to explain what you see as the main reason you've been so successful and grown so quickly? What's at the heart of the success? Uh, I think the main thing is uh, looking for a niche in whichever industry that you're, that you're in. And for us, it was a case of taking something that was largely manual and coming up with proprietary technology to automate it and just really put forward a tremendous revolution in what they were actually doing at that time. Having a very narrow focus on what you were looking at. I think you can have a narrow focus to start, and then once you've nailed one area, you can then expand outwards. Thank you. Iggy, what do you, what do you see as the heart of your success? I think if you're in an area where there is a huge demand, because there is a need that uh, is not solved, uh, specifically in the video ecosystem, I think it's a good place to, to be. So everybody wants to create video, but it's very complex and very expensive. So solving that problem is just solving a problem that is massive. But at the same time, uh, it's true that uh, in order to add value and contribute, it is very relevant to focus. And for that, we have really focused very much on the Facebook ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you. Dominic, what do you say? So for us, I think it was very, very important to listen and learn to the industry. Uh, what the industry is saying. So we make data-driven decisions, uh, which is very important for us to understand what the industry's problems are, solve those through data, and understand how we can implement in the most effective way. Okay, and what, what sort of data are you using? So we collect a lot of data around everything that the, uh, the, the audience or the user, reader, does uh, across content. And we uh, understand and analyze the journey of that user from a, a user turning into intent to purchase and then converting to a consumer. And we also want to understand what are the problems that we have to solve uh, in the infrastructures of publishers nowadays and understand how we can solve that through uh, seamless solutions that they don't have to really change their workflows and their infrastructure in a dramatic way. Okay, thank you. And what, what do you see as the heart of your success? So we, in our case, I guess it's been a crazy obsession on execution and, and technology. So through all our process, starting in recruiting the best engineers up to how we deliver, how we code, everything. I mean, it's, we're completely obsessed about that. And then we, we, we take metrics and we measure every single little thing. So it's, I mean, we're obsessed about focus metrics and execution. And what sort of metrics do you look at? What's the ones that dominate your scorecards every morning? Well, in, in, in our case, it's basically user engagement. Um, but with that can be a ton of things, like um, how many swipes a person does, or does this person use his right or left hand? Um, is it bouncing back, yes or no? How does it compare to yesterday or to last Wednesday or last year? Or, or how does this user or this, this publication compare to the industry standards? All those kind of things. Uh, Darren, do you have similar metrics to these that you look at? Yeah, so, so pretty much, I think uh, Sabine from Mercedes yesterday, I don't know if you saw her talk, said that in automotive, data is the new oil. So literally all the way through the customer journey, we're tracking what consumers are doing, how they're interacting with the vehicle, uh, their preferences, and it's really that that you're looking at all the time because that's what's going to lead your informed decisions for personalization later. I Iggy, does this apply to you as well? What sort of metrics do you look at? In our case, um, video advertising has been used mainly for marketeers, mainly for branding, the upper side of the funnel. Uh, but solutions like us are really enabling this technology uh, to deliver value uh, down the funnel in the conversion side, meaning that the KPI uh, our marketeers or clients are looking for it is to accelerate the ROAS. 
the return on the ad spend, meaning with the same level of investment, they will uh, increase by 10, 20, 30 percent their revenues uh, from that media spend. Thank you. Thank you. And Dominic? So we face the challenges of uh, that the uh, media industries really don't know how to uh, understand their audiences. And for us, we bridge that gap. And it's important for us to uh, look at uh, the, the audience, the user, uh, what helps them improve their experience across content. Uh, how can we enable uh, through machine learning processes that we can um, bring the best pr products and services and lead generation tools directly to them when they need it? So it's really important for us to analyze that data in a structured way, understand the KPIs that need to be uh, put into place. For each individual um, content creator, it's going to be very different. Uh, and we need to then uh, help them understand that data in the best possible way so that they can increase their performances. OK, thank you. So I've got a slightly harder question for you to finish. For each of you, could you briefly just share with the audience openly the biggest pain you've had in trying to cope with this kind of growth in your company over the last couple of years? Starting with you, Darren. Yeah, I think that um, you have to be careful with disruption because disruption and being a disruptive company can be overhyped, especially when you're dealing with established uh, established industries, you sometimes have to, you're quite, quite right, listen to the customer and scale out from there. They, they don't like to hear that you're disruptive. Well, not all the time, no. Sometimes there's obviously people that have established massive departments doing what you do, and you're going in and say, hey, we found a better way and we make more money. Uh, so it's the not. The baby's like, ugly. You, sometimes you have to tone it down. Okay. Iggy, what about you? The biggest pain point? I think in our case, uh, the toughest uh, topic that we're living is saying no to a lot of opportunities because demand is so huge uh, that it is very difficult to decide specifically where are you focusing. We have focused specifically in Facebook as a very uh, high growing channel, but we are saying no to a lot of opportunities. And that is critical to make sure that you are adding maximum and unique value to your clients. Learning to say no is very difficult, right? Because there's money at the end of some of those yeses if you say no to it. Because actually you have a lot of clients that are needing this type of solution. If you, if you think about basically how user behavior is, ca is changing in our mobile. People in mobile, they consume content very fast. They are stopping reading. They don't read anymore. So they need to have very clear, concrete, and fast messages that only video can deliver. OK, Dominic, we got 30 seconds for each of you on one. OK, uh, well, for me, the biggest challenge that we face is actually dealing with the media industry that is in a transitional uh, stage right now. They went from print to digital. They didn't know how to monetize their content. They're running around like headless chickens. We try to help them build the framework of their strategies for new monetization methods in the future. And it's sometimes very challenging because uh, oh, there's a lack of ownership uh, and a consolidation in the industry that we have to face. Thank you. And one, close us out, 30 seconds. <laughs> so in our case, I totally understand what Dominic is saying because we work with the same industry and we face the same challenges. It's, it's, I mean, this industry had a long, a big trouble moving from paper to digital and now from desktop to mobile is like a second cha challenge again, so it's pretty difficult. But adding to that, I would say, Hiring our engineers, so finding good talent is also pretty difficult. And that's nowadays what's stopping us from growing faster. Um, our engineering team is based in Barcelona, and the competition over there is very, very hard. From, there's a ton of tech companies over there. Finding good talent, that's the most difficult part. So you've got a room full of talent around here. What kind of people are you looking for? Oh, engineers, basically. Any kind of coder. Send us an email, websummit at marfield.com. So yes, I mean, we're crazy. We're, we have 27 different nationalities in our team. So basically, if you can code, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Round of applause, please, for our panel. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good job. Good job.